just over the last few days, uh, there's been controversy in RD. Some guy uh, with very bad spelling, I must say, put up graffiti. And I am, I have no time for uh, people putting up graffiti. But the reaction by Sinn Féin councillor to graffiti which read, Ireland belongs to the Irish, I find was just quite incredible. So whereas Podrick Pierce once said that Ireland belongs to the Irish, you may ask, who else would have belonged to? Uh, but that's very different from Novo Sinn Féin councillor in RD, Pierce McGill, who said that those comments that Ireland belongs to the Irish, they're disgusting, vile and racist. This is the Novo Sinn Féin line. We've got to ask, if Japan belongs to the Japanese, Egypt, Egypt belongs to the Egyptians and Pakistan belongs to the Pakistanis, why doesn't Ireland belong to the Irish? It doesn't belong to the Irish people, does it? The rules, the laws in the north of Ireland are made in London. A uh, huge percentage of the laws made in the south of Ireland are made in Brussels. So, in a way, sadly, uh, maybe it's true, Ireland currently doesn't belong to the Irish. It belongs, or the, the power to make the laws belongs in either London in the north or Brussels in the south. So that is our mission, to get back control of our laws, our money and our borders from either people in London or from people in uh, Brussels and that Irish people alone have the ability and freedom to make our own laws for our own good. Now, the whole thing about it basically resonates on the issue of nationality, that Ireland belongs to the Irish and we belong to Ireland. This is our home. Ireland is our home. Ireland is our homeland. We belong here. There's, uh, I think, 70 million people across the world who have Irish claim, uh, Irish parentage. And when Ireland, with our culture, with our language, our dance, our games, the way we interact and socialize, the way we celebrate life and celebrate death. There are so many things which are uniquely Irish and once they're wiped out in our homeland, well, they're gone for good. And so funny, the people who actually advocate for diversity should be uh, defending our unique culture and uh, the place of Irish people in Ireland. In many ways, like if I, and, uh, and when they bring up the issue of racism, yeah, that's very important because if I went, it's funny that if a whole lot of people from Europe go to, uh, go and invade uh, Africa and take over without the people's consent, take over countries in Africa, that's called colonialism. But when a lot of people from Africa want to come to Europe and they want to take over, uh, they want to come in to countries without our consent, that's, uh, that's called immigration. I would like to under, I would like someone to explain to me the difference between uh, why is one colonialism and other one, uh, why is that not colonialism? So it's a, certainly it is a form of colonialism. Like if you think of the family, or sorry, the nation as the extended family and that the, the house is the, obviously the house is the home of the family and just as in our country is the home of the nation. Now, hospitality, I remember I was at Adult Irish College in Colossia McBreed in Donegal and Downings uh, when I was about, I think, 21. And I remember a very famous priest there, Father Jack uh, Gallagher, a famous priest in Jerry, great man, great Gaelic or great fun too. And I always remember him saying that hospitality was a great mark of the Gael, it is a distinguishing feature among so many different and diverse cultures in Europe. But so when come, someone comes in and you welcome them in because they need help, that uh, that is hospitality. But if some, uh, if, but if another person comes to your house, 
maybe breaks into your house, who didn't ask you, and sits down, takes food out of the fridge, and sits down at your family table without your knowledge, uh, without your consent, well, that is not... Uh, you're not showing hospitality if you allow them to do that. It shows that you're a bit soft in the head. And the person who has come into your house without your consent and takes the resources of your house, which you have worked for, and they haven't worked for at all, they are taking advantage of your stupidity for allowing that to happen. So that does show the importance of being able, being able to control our own borders, having... Uh, because there's nothing wrong, but like it's the mark of a nation state to be able to control its own borders. Who comes into your country? Do, do, do the people who come? Sometimes it, it'll be the, uh, the way it is that people want or we need people to come in. But it's for Irish people and for the Irish lawmakers to decide the qualifications that they have, the numbers of people who come in. Do they contribute to our society? And if they contribute and they're needed here, they're welcome, at least uh, on, a, uh, on a worker's uh, visa, which doesn't, uh, in many countries, uh, people are allowed to come in on a worker's visa. And when that work is finished or, or they're no longer needed in the country, they may have a, a worker's visa for two years or five years or 10 years. And when that work is over, they return to the to their own country. I don't believe they should have a kind of a naked right to come and stay in Ireland forever just because they work here. It's some multinational, and it brings up the whole thing about nationhood again. Now, in nineteen sixteen, Pierce and I wrote his I read his collected works when I was about fifteen, sixteen myself, studying in uh, Foyle Road Library in in Derry. And he talked about nation and its distinguishing culture and Ireland's language, its dance, its games, as I spoke about earlier. But at the minute, Ireland is in a very difficult, difficult position. Uh, for that old saying, Tir Gan Tanga, Tir Gan Anam, uh, a country without a language is a country without a soul. And at the minute, our language is weak. Uh, the speaking of our language is weak. I know that people, there's people in the Irish Freedom Party are learning Irish uh, at the minute. And um, our religion, the distinguishing factor, uh, which distinguishes Ireland from Britain, uh, one of the factors that has uh, gone down in practice over the last number of decades. And even the teaching, the knowledge of our country's history has gone down. So we're in a very different position from the men and women of 1916 who fought because we have to build up our culture and its knowledge, its love uh, for Ireland, for its culture, its, its, its language, its games, its dance, everything that is unique. The, the physical beauty of our country is outstanding. Uh, the men and women uh, are not bad looking at her. And uh, we have to engender in people around us a love of our country, of our culture, and of the Irish people. Now, in South Dublin, uh, there, is, there is a very clear, what I call, what the uh, philosopher Roger Scruton called oikophobia. Uh, it means hatred of our own culture, our own home, our home homeland and uh, I believe that hibernophobes are running rampant in the press in Ireland at the minute and we see it even in Fianna Fáil which is traditionally a very nationalist party Fine Gael, the partitionist party and Sinn Féin probably the most shocking where a councillor would say Ireland belongs to nobody this is a, a party named after Sinn Féin ourselves alone and they now they've become like the, the stickies as we used to call them Sinn Féin the workers party who in the 70s and 80s we became a anti-nationalist Marxist internationalist party and that fits in so well with the globalist agenda of uh, so much power in the hands of multinationals in Ireland 
who care not a whit about Irish people at all. And the, when the laws, so many of our laws are made in Brussels or in London, we have Irish people who love their country, have a huge amount of work to do, and it's all ahead of us. So we have to build up love of our country, our language, its culture, its people, and we have to take back control of its lawmaking so we can control our money, our laws, and our borders. And Ireland belongs to the Irish. Now, people are other people who we ask, who we give consent to, are, are welcome, but they're welcome in our terms. And uh, any, if they're here illegally, I believe they should be deported immediately. And for the people who we welcome in, they should be welcomed, but not, we shouldn't be used as suckers and come in, people just live off the Irish state and Irish taxpayer for maybe five years, some cases 10 years, uh, with no legal right to be here whatsoever. So Ireland belongs to the Irish. Let's build up our, our country, our nation, a love for everything that makes Ireland unique. And let's make it free once again. Thank you. Go to markets.